How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 13. We're sitting at 8 and 3 on the season, and we have our final regular season game uh, up against us today against Maryland on the road. And the Terps are 2 and 8. So, again, like the last couple of games that we've played, this is one that we should probably expect to win. We are tied with them, or about on the overall, which is always good news for us because we consistently compete with teams that are better than us. Uh, we're favored to win as we should. Uh, the only problem is, even if we win this, I don't think it's going to be enough to get to the conference championship game. I'm fairly certain that uh, Michigan already has the tiebreaker over us and should be in no matter what. They're 10-0. They still have two games to play, 7-0 uh, in conference. So if we won this, we would be 7-2 in conference. We would need them to lose both of their games. But again, their games are against Iowa and Ohio State, but they beat us. So should they lose, they would also be 7-2 in conference. But because they beat us, they have the tiebreaker. So unless something happens with this game, maybe to the point where it glitches out, I'm fairly certain we are out of the Big Ten Conference Championship game. But we can still maybe hope for some chaos. Again, we're ranked number 13th in the nation. There are technically, including this week, three weeks left for college football to be played, plus the conference championship week. Uh, and with an 18 playoff, we don't have to move up very far to get in. Let's take a look at our top 25 polls. We know that one top team is losing this week or lost last week. It was Georgia and Auburn. That was one versus two and a close game. Made it to overtime 40 to 37 as the Bulldogs managed to win. Uh, LSU will now play that Auburn team, so I think we're rooting for LSU in this game. We want two undefeated uh, SEC teams to have to go against each other, and Auburn taking their second loss might be enough to drop them below us, but if LSU took their first loss, it's not going to do much. Uh, elsewhere, not really any crazy ranked matchups. Uh, we need Miami probably to lose to Virginia. Um, we want Coastal to beat Florida. The Teal Boys dropped out of the rankings, but got to win their 7-4 this season, looking to improve that as much as possible. 8-4 and four would be a lot better than 7-5 and five on the season, and a ranked win to end it would be nice. Uh, and then again, Virginia and Miami playing, but not a crazy amount of ranked matchups this week. Next week, I think, will be pretty impressive, but we're basically going to play this one and then sit out uh, with a couple of bye weeks afterwards. With our final regular season game showing up in probably no conference championship. This is going to be big for anyone that wants to win an award. The Benrick, we got a lot of guys. Carter, Miller, London, and Logan. Uh, all as finalists. Carter and Miller are also there for the Nagurski. With the Lombardi, we've got our left end, Troy Carter. And Sims as uh, our defensive tackle up there. For the Butkus, London and Logan are trying to fight there uh clint scott from florida currently in the lead for the thorpe kind of a similar situation with dallas miller and ron johnson the third trailing behind a florida uh defensive back and then the one that you kind of expect us to win the jet award the best returner it's frank blair at the top two punt return touchdowns no kick return touchdowns and this being maybe our final chance uh this season we're gonna try anything that we can to take one to the house We've got just a little bit of recruiting that we can do before we get into this game. Uh, all our points are accounted for, but a couple of visits that are ready to be scheduled. And they're all going to go to a bye uh, week because we don't have another home game. And I'm thinking we're going to go with the week 14 bye. We're not really competing with teams for these guys. So I'd rather get the bye out of the week early and see what the points do. Because uh, maybe we can rearrange those uh, a little bit better on the week 15 bye week. So with all that done, let's get into this game. Maryland, uh, 77 overall. They've got a 77 offense and a 76 defense. So should be deadlocked theoretically, but our playing has been so much better than them throughout this game, I would imagine, or throughout this season, I should say. Uh, we're going to go green helmet with white jersey and pants today. And Maryland has a lot of cool stuff. They have to wear the, the pride helmet. That is the coolest one. I think we're just going to go with the full state pride uniforms. An awesome alternate uh, for probably the most unique state flag in the country. As we come into this one, Maryland ranking pretty poorly on everything offensively. They're passing the ball pretty well, but everything else is below 110th. Uh, and defensively, everything is awful. <laughs> if we don't blow these guys out, it's definitely going to be because I'm making some stupid decisions because... 
Uh, just looking at the numbers, they are not a very good team. A bunch of guys visiting will try to ruin their days. Their top players, 82, 82, 82 hours, 84, 84, 83. So again, we have the slight edge and injury wise, they do have one guy out for a week. Uh, that torn pack on the wide receiver. Hopefully it doesn't change things too much, but uh, again, typically those tend to help us out a little bit more than they hurt us. So again, here we are, Maryland Stadium in the great state. And we're going to go with Tails. Uh, believe it or not, that's what we're choosing. It does fail this time. Uh, so one loss on the day, hopefully the only one, a five mile an hour wind. And it's going to be Frank Blair deep to return. The opening kickoff, and again, we have not taken one of these this season. Can we get the right blocking? It looks pretty solid, and again, it's my user. I just kind of keep running a little bit too close to those blocks. Well, first down for the offense. We're just going to run the ball, and I'd like to say it early, maybe a little bit often, but if you enjoy this video, please feel free to hit the like button as Durham Finch goes for a big one, 19 yards right out of the gate. Anything to get this offense going is nice. Triple option time. Maybe enough for us to pick up some more yards. No, Stan Williams getting met at the line of scrimmage. DB coming in to make a big stop there. Well, it's time for us to try and get Maurice his first throw of the day. Hopefully it's not too bad. Stepping back. Oh my gosh, that's not where I meant to throw it. We give it to Durham Finch on a weird little delayed route. I thought it was going to be picked, but it's 12 yards instead. That one puts us across midfield already. And we're just going to keep throwing five wide on this one. Over the middle, A is wide open. Can't make that throw. Right bumper might have been open. But again, we got to remember Maurice Tate needs a little bit of time to warm up before making those throws. So might have had opportunities to pick up more yards than that. But we just got to be safe and smart with the football as we throw a mid-screen. Jody Gentry holds on to it but gets tackled immediately. And that's our first third down. And where we're sitting at on the field, this is definitely four down territory. We're going to motion Brian Curtis. These guys are in the man. We want space for Durham Finch to run on this counter. The blocking looking not the best. And again, it's a defensive back there. Uh, probably the same guy, number 20, making the stop. So that's going to bring up a fourth and three. And this bad Maryland defense could potentially get their stop. We're going to try the read option. Maurice Tate keeping it. He's got enough blocks. Man, he took some big shots on that one, but had to sell out the body to get that first down. That is uh, not exactly what we were hoping to have at the start of this drive, is we're going to go with a little play action over the middle. Terrible throw. Terrible throw. Shouldn't have thrown it. We got lucky. Oh, if that was more inaccurate for Maurice, it was a pick six. Instead, we live to fight on. It's second and ten, and I'm just... I kind of keep throwing. Trying to get Maurice going early in this game. So, completion to Jody Gentry. And that's going to be enough for the first down. Strong running after the catch to move the sticks. So, besides the one bad pass for me, Maurice starts the game three of four. I'm going to try a little draw play. Typically, it doesn't work all that well in this game. But in that situation, three yards is better than none. Second and seven, stepping back again to throw with Maurice. A could be open, an accurate throw. Zach Wilson catches it, the tight end gets us a first and goal. That was just a strong stiff arm cheese there. So inside the 10, a chance to get on the board with a touchdown first. So we're already midway through this first quarter. I got to cut that back with Durham Finch. Another cut, and he is not into the end zone. Beautiful running from the running back there, but he's an inch or two short. Well, you better believe that this is a fullback dive situation. Courtney Smith, his first carry of the game, and he's into the end zone untouched as he breaks through the plane, and that's going to be 7-0. Now it's going to be time for our defense to see if they can respond and get a good stop early. I feel like it's been a while since we've had a game with a lot of turnovers. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to see from the defense. If we can cause some chaos for this Maryland offense, that would be awesome. It is going to be a first down for these guys to start. We're going to press up early. I want to try and cause some chaos and hope that our coverage is okay. Quarterback scrambling on this one. We're going to be able to hit him. That's good to know. Quarterback willing to run. He had the man I was supposed to be covering wide open, but elected to keep it himself. He got the four yards, which is probably not a bad idea. And this one, he's going to throw it out to the running back. I'm covering and somehow just whiffed on the tackle. So the hurry up in effect for these guys and they are really aggressive at the moment they kind of got us to jump offside hopefully that's not a penalty quarterback again scrambling i'm gonna try to strip the ball we gave up two yards in the process but that's a chance for us to make turnovers 
The pressure was coming. Just wasn't quite enough on that one. Which is totally fine. I can see this being a run on second and eight. But no, again, they step back to throw. Quarterback has guys open, but he dropped the football. Third down and eight. That should have been a first down near midfield. But instead, it's a long ways for them to go. And they're going to run a draw. Their first run of the game. And it's not going to be enough. Running back did a decent amount. Five yards on the play. But they're going to have to punt this one away. Kind of expect them to do better than that. This could be faked. But no, he's going to punt it away. I, for a second, I really did think that was a fake. It took me <laughs> took me a while to feel comfortable that he was actually going to kick that football. What an impressive voice crack on that one, huh? All right, Maurice, let's try to go up two touchdowns. I want the uh, second string to come in. Maurice Tate, Jody Gentry, they connect. Not the best pass that we could have seen there, but it's 38 yards, and Jody holds on to it through the contact. I don't know about you guys, but I have been very, very impressed with uh, our freshman wide receivers this season. They've done a pretty good job. Jody and Jeff Fontenot, the, the two main contributors there. Sturm Finch goes up the middle for a couple of yards. And it seems like Maurice might be kind of in the zone already in this game. First quarter. Maybe we can find him right bumper. This is a risky throw. Brian Curtis can't get there, but thankfully nobody else can. So that's incomplete. That's a very risky pass to throw in this situation, but... I was looking for the home run. Third and one, a run up the middle. The blocking downfield has been incredible there. And Durham Finch gets seven more to add to his total. This one was incomplete the last time we ran it. We're going with that same play action. Looking for Brian Curtis. A would have been open if we got the throw off earlier. Instead, I'm going to have to just try to scramble, make something of it. And there's Jeff Fontenot. And again, the freshman making big plays. Not the most accurate throw, but he's able to come back to the ball and get the catch for the first and goal. So our eighth first down already in the first quarter on that one. We're trying to run the read option. It's going to go to Stan Williams. He cuts it back, breaks a tackle, and just like Durham Finch, a decent run just short of the goal line. That's going to be enough to end the first quarter. Up 7 nothing, about to be 14 nothing. it feels like. And if the defense can just keep the foot on the gas, I think we'll have a decently comfortable victory. If this trend continues... Uh, Courtney Smith could have the game of a lifetime. Second carry, and he's going to take it into the end zone for his second touchdown. And there it is, that 14-0, one second into the second quarter. And this was an accident. I pressed the wrong button, and now apparently we're going for it. Uh, so that's a thing, and you know what? Screw it, we're going to try it. Maurice Tate outside the pocket. B could have been open. That's a tough one. Wilson, he, just, he ran forward a yard. Oh, I was trying to just hope that he would hold on to it, but he started moving right as I threw the football. Well, I guess we're going to have to continue to go for two-point conversions until we get back to that multiple of seven. We're going to have to get up to 21 points. <laughs> Decent job from the special teams gunning down on that kickoff. And on this uh, first and 10, again, we should probably expect them to be passing, but who knows, maybe... They'll be putting it on the ground for kind of the first time. Quarterback over the middle. What an absolute dime of a pass to Adam Bass or maybe Adam Bass. An incredibly tight needle to the thread on that throw. And he manages to do so for the first down. This is going to be an option. Quarterback gets the pitch off. They're going to get a solid amount of yards. Broken tackle. Tyrone Weber gets eight. And we can't be having that. So we're bringing some pressure. The big blitz on this second down. Kind of expecting a play action. And no, oh, quarterback's going to keep it. The blitz is going to work. Designed quarterback draw, and it's a loss of three on the play. So that'll give us a third and five to work with, and we'll see if we can stop these guys. We know that it's going to be a pass. What can we do to stop them? Throwing it deep. This one should be picked off. Dallas Miller. Oh, my gosh. Almost just ruined everything for the defense there. He tipped the ball, but the receiver almost got it. So the defense survives. Gives up a few yards. But it's fourth and five. Didn't allow Maryland to cross the 50 for the second time today. And they're going to be forced to punt it. Frank Blair, maybe a chance. See if we can switch the field here and maybe get his third punt return touchdown of the season. 39 just way too quick. Oh, he almost got blocked by our number 39. But it wasn't to be. 
It is, however, really, really good field position to start this drive. First and 10, stepping back to throw outside the pocket, feeling the pressure coming. Y is wide open. If we can get it there, Jeff Fontenot again, the freshman receiver. It's 36 again, not able to do anything. 39 was in chase, and it's a 46-yard touchdown. Maurice Tate, 7-9 through the air to start this one, and just like that, a chance for 21-0, but we got to go for two here. We weren't successful the last time. I called a pass here, but I'm going to audible to a run. Three down linemen. They are kind of stacked in the box, but it's Durham Finch Jr. And he's in for two. Oh, almost got stuffed at the line, but that's enough to make it that 21 to zero. We've been really honestly kind of blessed with the, the games we've had at the end of this season because we haven't had a, much competition in the last few. That's a great return, though. They get across the 30. Oh, there's a flag down, though. I guess not a great return. This is coming a ways back. All right. Well, another first down for this offense. What can they do? Because it's been a struggle. This one to run out towards the edge. That's going to be stopped after a gain of two. I don't know. I'm okay with them running that because we are going to be pressed up on this offense pretty much from the get-go. And this quarterback may be a little bit shaken up. That was a terrible and accurate throw from Andrew Payne. Just like that, the third and eight, they had their man open. We pressed, and he got past him on the slant route, but it's not enough. On the third down, watching for the screen. It's not coming. I left my guy open enough, and that one is caught over the middle, but stopped just short of the line. Again, we are so close to so many interceptions. It's the punt formation out again on fourth and inches. I'm going to believe him because it's at the 20, but man, Adam Bass, again, just barely holds on to one in such a close situation and again we're expecting a decent return from Blair trying to switch the field position up and they got some quick guys on those punt return teams but they're just not doing enough for the rest of their offense and defense hopefully I don't jinx myself by saying this but we're going for 69 in this game last game of the regular season let's try to meme on these guys B's gonna be wide open that's John Wilson juke move doesn't work but I mean, we've passed for 156 already. Some games, we don't even get close to that. If Maurice was on a Heisman campaign, this could be the game to have his Heisman moment. Just absolutely throwing it with ease. There's Jeff Fontenot. He already has a touchdown. Give him 11 more to add to his total. 9 of 11 already for Maurice. Absolutely beautiful. One of those throws was me just throwing it up in a terrible way the other one was an inaccurate throw from him but there goes Durham Finch for seven yards I think he's got like 60 on the ground and we've been successful in the red zone every time we've been here so far can we do it again this one a handoff to Durham Finch he's got a convoy in front of him and that's gonna be another first and goal I honestly feel a little bit bad for these guys uh, I would assume this could be their senior day and they're just getting embarrassed and Maurice Tate outruns the defender that was going to get the sack and just kind of bamboozles the corner. And he's going to walk it into the end zone. 28-0. I don't know what the last time we had 28 points in the middle of the second quarter was. Uh, we have played very well on both sides of the football. A few decent plays given up by the defense but they've been so close to so many turnovers and the crazy thing is that for the most part we haven't had to blitz so we're just exerting our will first and 10 they're gonna step back again to throw I got burned but the quarterback has three white jerseys surrounding him no chance to get the throw off it's a sack for a loss of five that's Troy Carter able to bring his man down and second and 15 again expecting passes We'll see quarterback scrambles again. A lot of space for Payne to run this time, and he'll slide down short of the line again, but 14 yards on the keeper, and we cannot be having that. We got to press up here, try and get some guys in position because they are in this big hurry up, and it's a handoff. Whitfield was there for the stop. So was Miller, but it's Tyrone Weber refusing to go down on that play. Well, good for them. We tr got to try to keep them from crossing midfield again, but that's not going to happen. Too easy of a catch there. Wide open for Steven Roberts on that out route. That's the most open I've seen somebody in quite a while. We're going to try to bring a little zone blitz on this first down. Trying not to get torched, and there it is over the middle. Just uh, too slow. Zone coverage is not very good right now. Well, if we were going to get a turnover, now would be the time to do it. Hopefully, 
we can find something. This one's going to be a little run, and that will be stopped. That'll slow him down a little bit on offense. We know that they're going to keep in that hurry up. What can we do? Again, just to slow them down. Second and nine, stepping back to throw. Quarterback gets hit. He gets sacked, and he fumbles the ball. Oh, they are lucky to recover that one. Well, we know the pressure is going to be coming on this one. Four guys rushing. They're stepping back to throw. We're there with Logan to force the fourth down. But this is almost certainly going to be a field goal made. And they go false start. I was about to take the timeout. That is perfect. Well, I got to try to sell out to block this one, right? Hoping for the best. And send it. Gentry, oh, almost had the corner. That kick is up and short. The five yards from the false start is enough for them to stay off the board. 28 to 0, 44 seconds still in this half. I thought for sure we were about to lose the shutout in the first half, but it is still alive. Maurice Tate on fire. John Wilson has the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, no. The pressure coming. Immediately we get hit. No chance to do anything. Took the time out immediately because I still want to score, but man, second and 18. What a great play call from the Terps on that one. Again, though, we're stepping back to throw, and Curtis comes down with it, and that'll be a first down with a face mask as well, so... Turned into a decently large play. Face mask. The good news for us, too, is that that face mask stops the clock. Uh, that was going to be a problem. Throw Jeff Fontenot deep. I'm looking for, again, that home run ball. Nobody's going to be open. Maurice, nothing doing. Couldn't run in time either. The coverage was just too good there. Whoever it was that was uh, on the, the go route on the right side just got jammed up at the line and could not get their release. So here it is, second and 21, 32 seconds. And again, feeling some pressure. B could have been open, X is kind of open, and that one's just turfed. Oh no. We gotta be able to do something on one of these, right? This is almost embarrassing, but we're sending them deep again. Third and 21, they are bringing some pressure, and I made the mistake of rolling outside the pocket. A could be open, Curtis comes down with it. Not enough for the first down. I got to take the time out here. That was just an awkward throw. Probably leaving the pocket a little bit too early on those. And now we're just kind of, again, looking for the home run ball. And pretty much ignoring anything else. B is wide open, though. And Wilson catches it. A little bit of stiff arm cheese. We'll be able to clock the ball and take a shot at the end zone here. 11 seconds. Sprint up to the ball. Maurice able to spike it. And we'll have 10 seconds. Maybe a couple of looks at the end zone. I would be lying if I said that I was confident about this. <laughs> We're still going to try to go for it, though. Uh, everybody running towards that side. I'm going to do a little something there with Wilson. Get him running across the field the other direction. Waiting, waiting, waiting. X, that's probably picked off. Oh, that was a terrible decision. I'm going to kick the field goal before I just give the ball away here. 28 yards to try and add another three points to the total. And there it is. 31 to 0. Still three seconds left in this half. And I'm going to try to just cheese the crap out of the AI here. Try a little bit of an onside kick. If they recover it, they might be tempted to kick a field goal. They fumble it, and Jeff Fontenot picks it up. Go down. Oh, Jeff couldn't get down. That was absolutely beautiful. But it's going to end the half. So I guess we did get a turnover. It's <laughs> just not exactly how we wanted it. 31-0 into the locker rooms, unable to cheese the defense. We do get an onside recover added to the tally, but not exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, I mean, what do we say? Defense has been incredible. They gave up a lot of yards and almost gave up three points on that final drive of the half, but the penalty on Maryland's offense sends them back just far enough, and the offense is doing a pretty solid job. I don't know, 31 points and a half for these guys is, I would say, pretty impressive. Again, I'm going to ask you guys, if you're enjoying this video, to please hit the like button. Easy way to help show support for the channel. Uh, and I do really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can get this win and get the shutout for you. Defense has been good for so much of this game. Can they continue? I don't know if we've had a shutout with Eastern Michigan yet. So this is the chance as we keep them inside the 25. A long ways to go for Maryland to score points. 
It'll be four wide receivers trips right to start this one off. They're going to step back looking to throw. Guys are open, but again, quarterback scrambling. He breaks one tackle. I'm trying to strip the ball. We gave up four yards, but man, a turnover would be huge. Instead, it's going to be second and six. Not exactly what I was hoping for. They're going to run the ball, and we're there to get the stop for a loss there. And quickly, a third long for Maryland. All right, what can we do on this third down? We know it's going to be a pass. Got to hope for the best. Send one man out in motion. Kind of left him open. The corner out wide open. And that's probably on me. I was going to run that one in the dime, but instead elected to get the extra linebacker in in the nickel. And that's who got burned. It was Logan. Couldn't get there in time. And oh my gosh, my user terrible trying to get that tackle. We give up another first down back to back. You know, these guys have uh, a lot of yards. They're averaging a solid amount, but just uh, not quite enough to score. But yeah, I don't see the defense getting a stop right now. Just the coverage doesn't seem to be good enough. And it's going to take almost a miracle. I see an out route wide open. Oh, well, they're definitely in field goal range now. The other thing is that we just can't get a stop. So no chance for us to try and make substitutions. This one will run up the middle. And that is going to be another first down for this offense. Now inside the red zone. Just absolutely relentless on this offense right now trying to do anything we can it's going to be a run we will stop them for a loss of three on that one but we're going to need to do that like 10 more times in a row before we knock them out of field goal range still second and 13 at least and maybe a chance for us to do something able to get the sub change our package and this one a run for oh my gosh way too many positive yards brandon rice 10 yards it's third and three i just don't think that our defense uh, has the wherewithal to get a stop here. Pressure, we got the sack on the quarterback, but that's almost bad news. Fourth and six, we'll certainly see the field goal. Fans were booing their man here as on this fourth down field goal attempt, it's another false start. <laughs> that's uh, really unfortunate. Only problem is at the end of the day, it's not going to matter for this one. They're still in field goal range this time. As, oh, I got caught. A little bit off sides, but the field goal is good, and I have a feeling they're just going to take their points. So that one, another game now where the defense just can't quite hold on to the shutout in the second half. We've definitely done it throughout the first half before, but haven't been able to complete it as a team. Well, if we have anything to look forward to, might be the offense just continuing to do some work, or, man, almost getting obliterated it. Ah, they're bringing a lot of pressure right now. I think they realized how much passing we were doing, and they know that they can get pressure on Maurice, and it has been working all too well. The question is, can we get past the pressure on a run and just have Durham streak to the end zone? This is a very AI play call. We're going with the slip screen. If they bring that pressure, it could work really well. They're bringing the pressure. The problem is that Durham Finch just stopped running. He had some space. I'm surprised he got three yards out of that. Well, we've already lost the shutout. I'm going to go for it. I am too angry at our offense for not being able to get this easier. So we're just going to pick it up on the ground and keep this drive alive. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to continue to try to pass, even though I know it hasn't really worked. But we'll see what can happen. This is probably picked off for just incomplete as we're getting hit throwing again. For as bad of a defense as Maryland is supposedly has, we are not having an easy time right now. Durham Finch unable to do anything, and it's third and seven. We had a ton of points at this point in the first half. Can't seem to get past midfield here in the second half. One of four so far on third downs in the day. Can we manage to convert one? This one caught by Zach Wilson, but short of the line again. So another failed third down conversion. But once again, we're going for this. Uh, Courtney Smith, unfortunately, probably not scoring a touchdown on this fullback dive up the middle. He is going to convert on fourth down. We're four for four on our fourth down so far in this game. Maybe this score isn't quite as impressive as I would lead you to believe uh, if we're having to go for it on fourth down this many times. However, we can just throw into Durham Finch. That was a really risky throw. Not sure why, but in my head, there was not three guys in the area when I threw that. And then when I released it, I saw them all appear. 
Uh, how about a little triple option? Maurice couldn't get the pitch off safely. So it's another third down to try and convert. And so far, I would say this has been pretty mediocre. Uh, we're going to try and just run up the middle. And that worked pretty well. We'll take that. 11 plays, but only 33 yards on this drive. For the first time the offense has seen the field, we are almost into the fourth quarter already, trying to wait, trying to get some pass off. And it is just a struggle in the pocket in this second half. So again, we're just gonna have to run the ball, I guess, because it doesn't really seem like anything else is working. Durham Finch picks up some yards, but that's gonna take us into the fourth quarter. Doesn't seem like there's much that we can do right now on offense. Uh, and that's coming from a team that's up 31-3 with six minutes to play. Uh, disappointing third quarter for sure for the offense and for the defense. Let's hope the fourth quarter kind of brings us back to that first half. But, I mean, six minutes to play. We're certainly not going to lose the game. It's just a matter of how much we'll end up winning it by. Still in what I would call four down territory as we start this fourth quarter. We're going to run a counter. Durham Finch having to cut it north earlier than I anticipated. I didn't like the look of that at all. And for about the 10th time this game, it is a fourth and two. And look at the way they're lined up here. We have to call a pass here. We have to hope that we can burn them. Jody Gentry could have the easiest touchdown of his career if he gets off the line. Well, he does. Should be wide open. Catches it in stride into the end zone. And, well, we have maybe gotten back to our ways. Good audible. Uh, good pass that time. Could have used it maybe another yard in front, but we'll take it. The Terps are getting bodied at home, and they're certainly not happy about that one. But we'll see if they have a little bit of fight in them at the end of this one. I don't know if I would be mad. Likely a senior day for their guys. If they want to try to ball out for four quarters, they can. My only question at this point is what can the coverage do? Getting aggressive, pressing it up in the man. They will step back to throw. Quarterback scrambling. Rawls, what are we doing here? Can we sack this guy? That was awfully scary. Glad we only gave up a yard. And it's time just to try to contain this quarterback. He's been scrambling too much. Our coverage has been decent uh, on a lot of these plays, but we just have been letting him do too much. And there again, I gave up a couple extra yards by not hitting him. So something's got to go well. Third and three. Wouldn't be surprised if they hand this one off. It is out towards the edge. And it's a first down given up with a lot more. Our tackling has honestly not been that good today. We've uh, had a lot of them broken. And we're going to try a little cover two spy. They're going to hand this one off. Probably going to be another decent gain. More broken tackles there. Only giving up 80 yards. But they're doing a good job of it. Can we slow these guys down for once? I'm going to use their car to try and get a sack. Quarterback scrambling. Logan, can we sack or strip the football? Sims, somebody's got to be able to strip this quarterback. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you, this is a little bit frustrating. All I want to do is create one turnover in the game, but it has been a struggle. Four quarters in the making. There's a sack, but I don't want sacks. I want turnovers. Well, second and 16. Let's just continue to try and get pressure. Parsons comes in. 3.50 left on the clock in this one. Plenty of time for the quarterback. All the time in the world, really, but eventually he takes a sack. Didn't take off running that time for some reason. That one's going to give us a third and a mile to defend against. Just send everybody back. They almost caught us offside for sure with the hard count. This one wide open over the middle. Oh, and as I'm kind of used to, we give up a ton. And we're going to give up a field goal there. Or maybe not. Probably wise of them to try to go for this, but we'll see what we can do. Fourth and five. Game potentially on the line. Their last real chance, and it's picked off by Durham Finch Jr. Of all people, a defensive touchdown, a pick six for the star running back. No idea he was in on defense, but he's going to showboat his way into the end zone for six. Absolutely incredible. The first defensive touchdown of the game comes from the best offensive player on the team. Well, I did not know he was in on defense. I guess he is an athlete, and he's getting it done on both sides of the ball. A real Iron Man today. There's Auburn upsetting LSU. 40 to 10. That is exactly what we didn't want to happen. Both teams now have one loss, and that hurts us quite a bit. But talk about a performance. Maybe Durham a little bit upset that we weren't giving him 
as many carries as he felt he deserves, and he decides to go out on defense and get his yards that way. That one was crazy to see. I did not expect that at all. Quarterback sends a guy in motion. This is going to be the option. Can we get out there with Graham? Good tackle, holding Rice up in the backfield for a loss of a yard. Always good news to see plays like that as we're going to see if we can cause some chaos in the backfield on the second 11. Another option. Quarterback gets hit. Plenty of space. More able to stand him up and they go back to the option to get nine. And this feels just like kind of weird at this point. Uh, <laughs> their offensive play calling has become very odd. Carter standing the running back up. How on earth does Carter not get that tackle? Tyrone Weber unable to be tackled today so many times. This one, another broken tackle from our star defensive end. The quarterback fights through the contact that time and picks up six yards as they have turned into a almost running exclusive team. I just accidentally ran a pick play on my own defender. And I'm about to call some timeouts just so that we can get some subs in because I think our defense being on the field this long all game has started to cause some problems. That one's going to give us a second and nine. I'm going to press up. That's going to be another option. They get the pitch out. Royal can't get the tackle, but Logan is there. That was a huge hit. Third and nine. And this hurry up has just been brutal all game long having to deal with it. They're going to go with the play action. Somebody's got to be open wide open over the middle. There it is. I just feel like uh, I'm becoming numb to those. Our third and long defense is almost non-existent as Durham Finch comes back in playing as a safety on this one. This one, an out route picked off by, wait a second, Wilson. Was that John or Zach? Wil That's John Wilson. We got offense playing all over the field today. Well, I guess I can't be too surprised. A running back and a wide receiver, the two guys to actually hold on to an interception in this game as it looks like they want to bring some pressure and we're going to deal with that let's uh let's try something here go with a little slide protect and i don't know if i was supposed to throw the y or x there curtis came down with it anyways i think i got lucky there i don't know why i'm continuing to throw the football in this situation but i just feel like uh, i want to continue to score points it's a lot of fun people got to be wide open here right no maurice gonna have to take off and slide down puts us over 100 rushing yards so that's some xp and i think we're gonna call it there conservative on the tempo Curtis with some back spasms after that crazy catch but we'll hand it off to Durham Finch for one final carry on the game and man he's got some speed right now Durham Finch into the oh inside the five pushed out at the one maybe the two so close what a way to end the game that would have been for him and it's only fitting that we give him the ball but he's out for a play because he's tired so let's take a time out here <laughs> i feel like he deserves a touchdown attempt so here it is durham finch first and goal gets the handoff into the end zone completely untouched and there it is rushing for over 2,000 yards on the season so it was worth it as we're gonna make it 52 to 3 and i keep going back and forth on whether i want to let this game end or continue to score so we're uh kicking another onside kick we don't get it adam bass continues to impress in this game and I think we could probably expect a run. Certainly, they got to wave the white flag at this point, right? Quarterback hit in the backfield for a loss, so maybe it was worth it. The clock should run out here. There it is. I'm surprised they didn't take a timeout the way things have been going, but we can let this wind down to zero. And we can leave the state of Maryland with a really, really good win. Not quite a shutout. We came close. We came really close, but not enough. 52 to three, a blowout win on the road. Feels good as the final regular season game. We likely won't be playing uh, in the conference championship game. Almost all but guaranteed that we won't, but set ourselves up, take a good rest here for a few weeks and then gear up for a bowl game in probably a month and a half, honestly, with how much time it seems we have off. At the end of this one though, the offense rolled, the defense rolled. But it's really offensive players on defense that might end up being the story. A lot of Iron Men coming out, uh, playing well, getting those interceptions. Well, that was a game and a half, huh? 318 passing yards, 134 on the ground. Barely had the time of possession. We win it 3-0 in the turnover battle. And most importantly, it's 52-3. Uh, that lone field goal in the third quarter kind of hurts. 
But other than that, 24 points in the second quarter, 21 points in the fourth quarter. Nothing that they could have done to stop us. And Sims is our defensive player of the game. Two sacks and a forced fumble. You could almost put Durham Finch up there for both offensive and defensive. Durham didn't play a lot of downs, but a pick six is pretty impressive. How about Maurice, though? 17 to 24, an impressive throwing day for him. And that's with all those weird pressures where he just kind of got hit as he was throwing. Uh, no interceptions. Three total touchdowns. It's just a good game for him, for sure. And there it is, 9-3, the end of our regular season. Not even a contest is correct on the headline there. Uh, unfortunately, unable to get double digits in the regular season, and since we aren't going to be making it to a conference championship, uh, it's just going to have to hope that we can win our bowl game, and we're going to have to hope that it's a good bowl game. Instead of, well, we just need chaos for the next couple of weeks. Ooh, that's nice. We do level up to 26. Did we get any commits? No. Uh, Jesse Jones goes to Cincinnati, but I don't think we were too worried about that. Coach of the Year finalist. And then again, Lombardi, Thorpe, Jet, Nagurski, Buckness, and the Bednarik. So that's all good. And we move up one spot. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, But 12 is better than 13. So, uh, I mean, we can see maybe if there's going to be some chaos here in week 14. There should be a lot of big rivalry games, but will they be good enough? Ohio State needs to beat Michigan. They did just pull out a squeaker against Iowa, 17-6. to Kind of a traditional Big Ten score right there. Other than that, I'm not seeing a lot of ranked matchups in front of us. Wisconsin needs to lose to Minnesota, but uh it's not looking good the the upsets are gonna have to be really really big if we're gonna find our way in the playoff at this point unfortunately that is gonna have to do it for this episode again if you enjoyed it please scroll down and hit the like button it really helps uh let me know that you guys are still interested in the series and it's an easy way to help support the channel as well after that i want to know in the comments what you thought about our offense uh playing on defense <laughs> a couple of picks from uh offensive uh, skills positions is really cool and who knows maybe we need to do that i did run a lot of different defensive sets in this game and that might have been why we were so successful but after you've liked and commented go ahead and subscribe and then head down to the description where you can find links to my twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster where again we have uh, an Old Dominion Glass Bones Dynasty, as well as the online G12 Dynasty that we've been working on. We are currently 0-2 in our user games, but we're kind of starting to learn how to play user games, and I don't know, we'll get a win sometime within the next couple of weeks for sure. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the College Football Revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster, you guys are the Grey Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night, or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios!